In this segment, we're going to continue looking at using graphics mode to create embroidery for digitizer software. And specifically, we're going to take a look at the lettering tool that's found here on the left hand toolbar. Now, if I go ahead and start the lettering tool option, um, the first thing I need to do is click on my screen where I want to place my text. And it puts my prompt there. And perhaps I can just zoom in over top of that area a little bit closer. And so now I could basically start typing a word. So I'll go ahead and type in my name, Trevor. And you can see up at the top on the tool options that this is the font that I was using. And I have the ability to choose from um, all of the different fonts that are in my computer. So these are all the Windows fonts that I have installed in this computer. And you can certainly add to the fonts, you know, to have any style of font that you want. So um, you could choose anything from Arial to you know, Century and whatever you feel that you'd like to have for your fonts. So that's you create your embroidery um, based. So first of all, you create the lettering. And here I've got my word Trevor, and it's in this freehand script. And so okay, if I decided that I was happy with this vector lettering, and I wanted to convert that into embroidery now, I have two options. One is to convert selected text to embroidery lettering. And this is specifically only a tool that you use when you're converting text from vectors to an embroidery object, and it makes it a lettering object, which is different. The, alt the other option is to convert the selected object to embroidery, and this will give you a similar result, but it's different because when you use this tool, it makes um, objects, embroidery objects, but it, this software doesn't know that it's lettering. Versus this option, when you use this, it actually converts your text into embroidery lettering. And I'll, I'll show both methods and sort of discuss the differences. So let's go ahead and just, I've created a little bit of text. I'm going to go ahead and ask it to convert the text to embroidery lettering. And so it goes ahead and it converts that object and it pops over into my embroidery mode so we're back in easy design software and here's the embroidery that I had created in um, Corel draw in the graphics mode and you can see here in my resequence list that it, it recognizes it as a lettering object and because it's a lettering object I'll have all of the um, sort of tool options that are available for a lettering object. So for example, if I select that object and then choose reshape, I would have the ability, and I'll just zoom in a little bit more closely over this word, to change things like the spacing of the letters. So I could change the letter spacing if I wanted to. Um, or I could, for example, go in and make a modification. Why don't I zoom in really closely here and click on the object outline and that uncovers the digitized points and I could therefore change the actual shape of the letters but they're still letters so basically because I converted it into an embroidery lettering object I have the ability to apply any of the different tool functions that are specific to embroidery lettering like the spacing of the letters um, or you know, if for that matter, using lettering art to distort the shape or the objects afterwards. So those are things that are specific to lettering options. And if I just pop back over to graphics mode again, and of course now my word, whoops, I didn't go to graphics mode there. So now my word Trevor has been converted to stitches, so therefore it's no longer a vector. So if we choose vector lettering again, and I'll just type in my name, once again, and I'll select it and make it larger. Now, rather than converting this object straight to text, and or sort of the text to lettering embroidery, if I choose this option, convert selected objects to embroidery, so I need to select this, convert selected objects to embroidery. So now notice, I've got the word Trevor, and very similar to the previous option it's been converted to embroidery but in this case instead of being converted as an embroidery lettering object it was converted as a, a group or a cluster of regular embroidery objects and so for example now if I was to select I'm gonna zoom in over top of this word Trevor 
And now if I select it and choose reshape, I have the ability to reshape the letters, but I no longer have that ability to um, move them along a baseline because generally speaking, the way that I converted it, the software strictly looked at the vectors as embroidery shapes and it converted them as embroidery shapes and it didn't make them into a lettering object. So um, there are advantages and disadvantages, but for the most part, um, converting lettering sort of text into the lettering object is going to be a little bit better because you have that ability to do things like the kerning of the letters. So in here I can change the letters in this way, but if I wanted to adjust the lettering and sort of spacing and whatnot, I would actually have to break this apart now. I would have to select this group. Remember it's a it's a group and we looked at it in a previous segment in the video we had talked about um, when objects have this object type that we can use this tool here to break them apart. And now that I've broken them apart, look what it turned into. See? After the word Trevor, there used to be a cluster with the word Trevor, and now I literally have all of the individual objects that made up the word Trevor. And so I could still modify and edit them, but it's just not the same as being specifically embroidery lettering, which gives us all of those different embroidery lettering editing capabilities. So you have the two options, and they're really, there probably will be um, good reasons to go either way but if I go back to graphics mode again and create another lettering object and do the word Trevor once more time and so I have pretty much exactly the same word as I do above this word Trevor and but if I choose convert text to embroidery lettering option pretty much the same embroidery but now when I choose things like reshape I have that ability to um, move the letters along the baseline. I have the ability to change the baseline to be in any shape baseline and therefore add a point to the baseline and now put Trevor up on a curve. So really when you're working in graphics mode, if you have lettering and you want to convert it to embroidery, I think you're better off to use the option to convert your lettering into um, convert the text into an embroidery lettering object. Um, but that said, you have two options, and that was the real point of it, was that sometimes you're going to want to use the option to convert it into lettering, but there may be some situations where it's better off, you don't need this lettering capability, and you prefer to have the ability to um, break the lettering apart and put it into um, you know, other forms. So I'm not really sure, because to be honest, I don't see any reason why we couldn't select this embroidery lettering and then... Um, ungroup it and it's more or less the same as breaking it apart so yeah um, that's a little bit more about embroidery lettering and so if we go back into graphics mode one more time and just take a look at over here creating lettering is basically just a matter of clicking on the lettering tool placing it into your desktop and like I said here you have so even before I start typing I could change the size so the lettering is measured in points that's 24 point if I go to 48 points it just makes it larger automatically and you choose from your list of fonts that are available for your computer it could be any font you want and then you start typing in your word Trevor and when you're done with all of that you can simply choose to convert it into convert it to embroidery or convert it into embroidery lettering so there you have it. So that's how you can use the graphics mode to create new lettering objects for use in your digitizer software.